Kamusanakayo. Hola, hola, everyone. What's good, everybody? My name is Nico Blitz. And I'm Jackie Ramirez. And this is the Mexipino Podcast, episode 36, I believe. Are you All I know is it is right before the Mexipino Food Fest going down at District 6 on uh, 1016. Yes, it is. It's about six days away now. Yeah, about six days from the time we're recording right now. Yes. Um, but we have today. a whole bunch of vendors. Babe, yes. you want to go over all the vendors that we have? Yes, I can pull that up real <laughs> quick. If you would have told me that I was going to do that. Um, she was prepared. No, Nico didn't tell me that I was going to do a vendor update. So Too bad if she remembered that we talked about it on the last one, that we were going to do a vendor update. Look. And she came unprepared need, today, ladies and gentlemen. I just need Nico to not right now. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So our vendors are, our food vendors are going to consist. Ooh, I almost hit the, I hit the mic. So our food vendors for our Mexipino Food Fest are Chef's Truck, WH42, A Monarch Beer Garden, Original Pose, Dre's Lemonade, Iris Bites, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Iris Bites, Mama's Papa's, Comali, Grajeda Mexican Grill, and 187. So those are all our our food vendors. So sh- big shout out to them. Yeah, shout out to them. I also heard that one of our food vendors is going to have a birria lumpia. Yes, that's Grajeda Mexican Grill. And I saw it on their Instagram when they were tagging us and like I was posting everything. They are debuting their Vidia Lumpia, and I am so excited. I am too. Like, you know, it's it, it'd be cool if it's like real Vidia or even just like the, the replacement beef, Vidia. The like, beef Vidia? because sometimes, depending on how I feel, I like the real Vidia and like the beef Vidia. Yeah, I feel like if you're like you're sitting down and at a restaurant, like you can, we want the like the goat. Yeah, the yeah. actual goat. Yeah. But if you're like, if it's like a Vidia truck or, you know, something quick, like, it, it's more than likely beef media. Yeah, yeah. Like, the beef media, like, sometimes it really do smack, and I'm just like, okay, like, this is cool. Yeah. But then, yeah, like, off the bone, like, that one restaurant that we went to, like, with your parents oh, and whatnot. Oh, yes. Uh, shout out to, oh, my gosh. Hold on. I need to get it right, because they've changed names twice. How they've changed names and been able to survive? That's crazy. Uh, because they're that good. Honestly, let me tell you guys a story about this spot anyway. Because, like, this spot, it tastes really freaking good, but it's one of the most cruel spots you'll ever go to. Why is it a cruel cruel spot? Because they serve you goat, they serve you birria, and literally every photo around the store are photos of goats. I'm You literally have photos of goats while you eat goats. So as you're eating what you're eating... You're looking at what you're eating as well. Shout out to Bidiaria Don Boni. That's what it's called. Literally Boyle Heights classic. Okay. And it's like, if you've ever been to Bidiaria Don Boni, like, you know they don't serve anything else other than just Bidia. Yeah. That's it. Like, there's no sides. There's no, like, there's no rice. There's no beans. It's just meat. And that is it. Meat and tortilla. Meat and tortilla. And it is so Good. Yeah, it is so super good. good. And shout out to Boyle Heights. I've had a couple of those on my face when I was a uh, younger lad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so those are our food vendors. Uh, we did yeah, Don Boni is not one of our food vendors. We just wanted to shout them out. So we did yeah, Don Boni. Yeah. Anyone who has a hookup, if you guys want us to do a live podcast from there, I would love that. Yeah, I'd be super down for that. Honestly. So. What about our uh, marketplace vendors? Our marketplace vendors. So these are like craft vendors, uh, clothing brands, and just other like miscellaneous uh, vendors. This is consisting of Nanai Land, Desde Mi Raiz, Still Winning, Hella Dope Records, House of Jefas, Flex in My Complexion, and Cold Creative. Yeah. So shout out to all of our marketplace vendors. We're super excited. I'm ready to spend money. And eat good food. Dude, like, we, I mean, we spent money to get the get the festival going, but I just feel like we're going to spend more money on the food, <laughs> on the real. marketplace vendors and everything. <laughs> yeah. I do want to give a couple, like, dope shout outs, though. Like, shout out to Cold Creative. My guy Rory made it on Rory. Instagram. Um, me and Rory have been friends for, like, I don't know, ever. Mm-hmm. Like, literally since, I don't know, I was, like, 10. 
So it's really, been, yeah, it's I been, didn't know that. You never told me the backstory of you and Rory. Yeah, yeah. So basically, me and Rory both went to a Cayuga summer camp. So every summer we would hang out. Cayuga summer camp. Yeah, for I think maybe what what it seemed like maybe two or three years. Oh, wow. But yeah, like, I mean, I wasn't into DJing. He wasn't into uh, making graphics or anything. But we were just like two kids. Like, we were playing Yu Gi Oh! We were uh, playing Beyblade. We oh, were you were those Foursquare. kids. You were those kids. What do, you, what do you mean, those kids? <laughs> it's okay. I, play, I played Beyblade too. You ever think about like. And Yu Gi Oh! actually. Yeah. But you ever think about Beyblade? I do want to get to Rory still, but like, Beyblade was actually such a, a, a dangerous game. If you think the, about the Beyblades, oh yeah, because right? the actual blades were like metal. So yeah, if you like really were, chucked it at someone, like it some would have hurt. Some were plastic. It's fine. Some were plastic. It's fine. No, nah, they were metal. Some of them were metal, but not like all of them. Some of them were plastic. I remember my brother and I. We had the like big plastic dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> that's what we would use. I used to love Beyblades. My brother and I used to play like marbles too. And then yeah, like yeah. my grandma like juked us out of like a game one time how'd she do that so like we played the mar like marbles I, I don't know the way we played it and i'm pretty sure everyone plays it is like you like pick your marbles and then you try and hit the other one whatever like yeah. the other po opponents so one day my brother and i were sleeping over my grandma's and my grandma i didn't know we didn't know that she knew how to play marbles so we're over here trying to explain the game to her because we're sleeping over her house and then she's like oh like i'll try it Blah, blah, blah. And we're like, okay, like whatever. Turns out she knew how to play and she just kind of like destroyed us in the game. Damn. And we looked at each other. We're like, did grandma just like juke us out of like this game right now? Yeah, it was super funny. She pulled a Drake and Josh on you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, she did. <laughs> I do. I know what you're talking about, actually. You do? Yeah. It's when they were playing with Megan, weren't they? They were playing, no, no, they were playing pool at a pool house, and then they were telling everybody that they oh, didn't know how to play. Oh, okay. So then what ended up happening was that, like, they told the first people they didn't know how to play, then they just kept on betting and betting and betting. Oh, yeah, and that's And so they kept on losing game. money, and then they ended up, like, winning all their money and more at the end, so everyone's like, oh, like, you guys you, were playing us. Yeah, I, now I remember that episode. Yeah, a very <laughs> iconic episode. But back to Rory, though, so, like... Um, cold creative. If you guys are like in the Bay Area or even Los Angeles too, like even what LA. He'll do. yeah, even LA, it's crazy how much he's taken over. Like he's um he's created merch for like Blast, Bina Rideau, mm -hmm. um, Pilo. I don't even know if I could say any of that shit, but whatever, it's out there now. Um, what I, it sucks because I actually have one of his hats in my car right now. Oh damn, yeah. But basically, his right. merchandise has like the glowing eyes on like. It's, all the people on it, like whether it be cool. like Warrior players, like, you Laker know, Mario, players. Laker players, like all that. So shouts out to Cold Creative. Yeah. And something that I like about like uh, Rory and his like vision with all that is that he doesn't stay like in the Bay Area. Like he did make like a merch, uh, like a graphic line or merch line of like Kobe, you know? Yeah. And obviously that's going to make its way here to L.A., uh rory shout out to you for sending me a, a little care package i really appreciate that and you actually he actually sent fuse dj fuse from uh crew show uh, a shirt too yeah so, i saw that and he yeah. was getting down on that uh dj video he was doing yeah but also yeah. too shouts out to uh in the bay because in the bay i don't know why but like well actually i do know why because shouts out to my boy stunnamano too but they've been taking over the bay area in regards to like merch their hoodie literally says in the bay and you can get in like purple, red, all these random ass colors. And yeah. like I've seen their hoodies everywhere in the bay. Yeah, I've actually come across like some like viral TikToks too, um, from like people who are in the bay and and they're wearing their hoodie and it's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. But all of our vendors, we like we really appreciate them for reaching out, for wanting to do this and you know, we're, we've met some of them, others we haven't, and we can't wait to meet them, and we can't wait to meet you guys who are attending. Really, really huge shout out to anyone who has bought a ticket to our event. It's, again, only $5 admission. Um, kids and 12 yeah, and under are free. Kids 12 and under are free, yes. And, yeah, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm, I'm so stoked. My parents are making the trip up there. 
and uh yeah it's gonna be fun and then nico's family is obviously there too yeah so it's gonna be a, a cool fusion of our, our families not my entire family is going unfortunately but um since they are here in la but when we have an la one they're gonna be they're gonna be there yeah for sure well speaking of your parents too your parents have been kind of going all over the place like They've been traveling a lot over the past year. They recently just got back from Mexico. Yes. So my parents are kind of like, they call themselves like empty nesters, even though I'm still there. Oh, like they just live at the house by themselves? Yeah. Like they feel like they're just like, oh, like we're a bunch of empty nesters. My mom said that one time. She told my brother and my sister-in-law and me, she's like, oh yeah, we're a bunch of empty nesters. I was like... I still live there. Like, what you mean? She goes, <laughs> well, yeah, but you kind of do your own thing now. I was like, but I still live there. Like, yeah. um, but my parents, I am happy because my parents have been traveling a lot more. They've just been enjoying their life. They've, um, it's something that they've always wanted to do. I know that. Enjoy their life. Well, like travel. Well, I think everyone wants to enjoy no. their life. <laughs> I meant like travel, but yeah, it, it's cool seeing them like, just go and do different things. They just recently went to um, La Quepaque, Guadalajara, which is where my mom's from. La Quepaque? La Quepaque. Yeah. So that's like the, the town. Oh, okay, okay. In and Guadalajara. In Guadalajara. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah. So the whole thing is La Quepaque, like Jalisco. There's Jalisco, Guadalajara, there's La Quepaque, there's, yeah, there's different, but my mom's- It's like Mission Street, San Francisco, California. It's the town. Not Mission- I wouldn't say the street. The Mission District. Yes. Mission District. Yeah, so my mom's from La Quepaque. Anyway, so, and then they actually went to Tequila, Mexico, which is an actual town. In case you guys didn't know, anything that is tequila, that says tequila- has to come from tequila. See, and I didn't learn that until having a FaceTime conversation with Jackie's parents the other day. I was like, wait, I thought tequila was just the brand of alcohol. I didn't realize tequila was a town. No, tequila is like where tequila is made. Yeah. So that's why it's just like, for me, when it like people try and create their own tequila brands, it's like, well, you better be going to tequila Mexico because... And helping out those families that produce tequila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, you can even have, like, tequila tastings just like wine tastings over here in the States. So you can ho go have tequila tastings over there. And so my that parents... That sounds dangerous. That sounds so dangerous. Apparently it was. So my dad... Uh, well, my, my family, uh, my parents, and then, like, my family in Mexico, they went on a tequila tasting tour to two different, uh, like, uh, tequila distilleries, I guess. Yeah. Is that what I should call it? I guess so. A tequila brewery? A teque but it's not no, brewed? Brewer <laughs> no, I think it's distilleries. I think okay. it's called distilleries. So tequila distilleries. Um, and there was about, I think he said four to eight shots, like at, ev like at every one, like throughout the whole tour. So he said by the time they were done, like they were just done too. Like the they were hell? drunk. And then there they can like, there's a little restaurant that like serves like huge cantaritos and it's really like, yeah. What's a cantarito? So a cantarito is like a, it's a drink. It's kind of like a, a paloma, the one like we make. It's yeah, just yeah, tequila yeah. and squirt with grapefruit, lime juice, and like a whole bunch of stuff. But in Mexico, they go like big with it. You can either get like a small one, like a handheld one. Or you could get oh, a giant one. So oh, a so cantarito is the actual like. Okay, so it's the big ass Winnie the Pooh honey jar that they were serving. It's a clay pot. That's but what yeah. it looked. But that's what it looked like. It looked literally like the Winnie the Pooh honey jar. Yes. Yes, that's a cantarito. It was literally like a big ass circular container Honest with like half brown and half like of a lighter brown underneath. Uh, honestly, like I think for like I've always wanted to do like a. Uh, like a themed birthday party for myself, but very like Jalisco themed. And I always wanted like, what? What are you going to say? <laughs> what? What? You're going to make a joke right now. <laughs> like a Mexico theme. Isn't that every party? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. So that's why I I'm didn't say it. it. I, you that's said why it. I'm saying it because I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> but like, I meant like. With that's like me saying like, yeah, you know, I want to do like a filipino theme party every year no babe you don't get it <laughs> no i get it i get it i'm messing with you it's a joke anyway 
So yeah, I've always <laughs> wanted to have like a themed birthday party where like you have cantaritos, you like, you know, there's just like these woven like blankets as like the, you know, as the okay. table runners. Like I've always wanted that. It's really cool. Like I miss Mexico so much. I miss it a lot. I wish I would have gone. But my mom said that it's funny because <laughs> when you're like when your family that li- like, like it lives in another country wants you to come back, something that I've noticed is that they'll make you like the godmother or like <laughs> godfather oh of like God. one of your many cousins over there so you can come back and like go for their quinceanera or something. Because that's what they're doing to my mom. They're all like, we're going to make you so-and-so's, like, godmother, so you have to come back for her keen set. Well, that's the funny thing, because, like, I'm a godfather to so many of, like, my random cousins that I, I, I could probably make a whole list out of it. I'm sick. But I don't even know who I'm a godfather to. <laughs> like, my, like, sometimes my aunties will call, like, you know, my grandparents or my mom or whatever, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, isn't Nico the uh, godfather of uh, da-da-da? And I'll be like... I don't know. You're yeah, like I wasn't. I wasn't at the church last time I checked. I wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> last time I checked, the only person that I know as of right now is, is Chance, Chance <laughs> your Chancellor nephew. Jace, my nephew. <laughs> Outside of that, I'm just like I don't well, know who my other god uh, kids your are. God, your goddaughter is Kimora too, right? Kimora, uh, Kiana, Kiana, Kiana. Yeah, so Kiana, Kiana too. and Chance, you like are for sure. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are like your. God, uh, godson and goddaughter. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like a cool gesture to try to like, you know, get the godparents out during like a special event, like a quinceanera or whatever. But, you know, personally, I do also think that the godparent needs to be in the child's life, in the child's life regularly, like, in, yeah, regularly. Like, and you know, like granted, you could be like 300 miles away or something like that. Like, that's cool. Yeah. But like, if you're like way in a out different there, country, in a different ass country, or like you just straight up don't even see that side of the family or whatever, it's kind of like, yeah, like I just don't feel any like godfather obligation. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I like, I feel like a little like hurt because I'm not a godmother to anybody. And what? Like, yeah, I like I like no one chooses me to be a godmother, and I'm so sad about it. Like I'm just <laughs> like, do I not have the qualities of a godmother? Like I want to be someone's godmother. I'm surprised. I'm surprised you're not like your uh, like 15 year old cousin's godmother or something. Nope, I'm not. I just don't think like people think I'm responsible. I think that's probably or it. that too. Yeah. Yeah. I like, agree that I'm not responsible. <laughs> it's a joke. Anyway. I'm kidding. Yeah. I get sad about it. Like I see everybody else being like everyone like my age too is already like a godparent to somebody. And like, I'm not. And I feel like really sad about it. I mean, what is it really sometimes? Yo? Let's, let's kind of keep it funky. Well, like, well, let's be- kind of, let's kind of keep it funky. What? what do you really do as a godfather or a godmother or a god they? What do you do? Like, why did you say that? Well, I'm being inclusive. What? Godparent is just a general term. Well, I said god. Well, no, because I said godfather, then godmother, then I didn't want. Then I said god you, you they. Could, you could just say godparent, babe. No, but I'm saying. Just say godparent. Okay, godparent. Thank you. God them. Anyway. Um. <laughs> I don't know. Like, well, well, I know, like, you know, you help and raise the, like, their child in the sense of, in the sense of, like, I'm going to be there for you in the event of something, like, happens. And, you know, for, like, my parents, they're godparents to my cousin, Kilani. And I remember when Kilani went through something in middle school, like, my uncle and my aunt just didn't know how to talk to her. So they said, hey, we need your guys' help. And so my parents talked to Kilani and, you know, they gave her a different perspective on things and it helped. But wouldn't you do that even without being the godparent? Yes, but it's more of like you if you're a godparent, that means somebody trusts you with your parenting abilities or you're just like your your life, like your morals, your morals. 
I'm not going to go to like a person that I don't trust and be like, hey, or like a person whose morals I don't really like follow or their parenting styles I follow and be like, hey, can you talk to my kid? Because like I, something happened, you know, but I am going to go to someone that I trust, someone that I like, uh, I see that their parenting values are really good and that their morals are good. I'll be like, hey, I need you to talk to my kid. Oh, no, no. I, Which I totally. Which now that I think about it, like, that's probably why I'm not a godparent. Because, you know, I think I have, like, different views on a lot of things. Yeah. And that might not be what other people want me to tell their kids. Well, but like, that. So, well, I bet, like, that's what I'm saying. It's just, like, whether you're a godparent or not, I could trust certain people whether they're a godparent or not. Yeah, no, and I so, get that. So, like, I mean, you take Catholicism out of the way. Yeah. What's it really there for? Yeah, I get that. That's like, all I'm saying. Well, That's yeah. all I'm saying. But it, anyway, I, but I still get sad that I'm yeah. not a godparent to anybody. You get it. You know. I probably won't be a godparent to anybody. I've come to that realization. I mean, I still call Chance like my nephew. I don't even call him my godson. No, I mean, you're, you're still going to call him like your nephew. Yeah, of course. But like, he's going to call you like Ninong, you know? Uh, you can still call me uncle. I ain't tripping. Anyway, <laughs> it's it's not that bright on the other side. It's all the same. That's all I'm saying. It's all the same on the other no, side. No, it's not. It, I'm literally on the other side. Well, maybe for you, I it literally is. have like maybe for six you, god kids. Maybe, and I know you. two. <laughs> Actually, I know three. One of them I don't talk to. <laughs> what like maybe it's different for you, but for me, it's like I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to be a godparent to somebody. I get it. I get it. Someone wake me their godparent to their kid. I remember uh, Sabrina, my sister, had actually told me, like, yeah, so, like, now you got to give Chance, like, hella money during, <laughs> during birthdays and everything. I'm like. Yeah, you actually do have that responsibility. I'm like, geez. So, would you say that godparenting is a money grab? No. It's just <laughs> more of, like, it's just more of, like. You you should treat my kid different than like all your other nephews and nieces. Damn. So godparenting is favoritism. In a sense, yeah. Damn. Sorry, Bria. When you see this in the future, I'm so sorry. <laughs> For the record, I want to treat both of you equally. However, my godparenting act says I cannot, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love them both. Shout out to Bria and Chance. I will say, though, shout I am back Isla. in L.A. and Isla. Yeah, shout out to Isla, who can walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Chance can't walk. <laughs> well, he can't walk by himself. Chance is getting there. He's getting there. He's a hell, He's hella lazy. <laughs> no, he's, like, he's for <laughs> real lazy. Like, he'll, like, crawl to me, and then I'll pick him up, and then I'll turn him around, uh-huh. and then he'll end up just, like walking to wherever he wants to and then he'll crash his body into like either a sofa or a pillow I'm or sorry. anything and i'm just like bro like you just don't want to you just don't like want to. i know you want to stand up with your with your one year and like three month self or whatever but you just don't want to walk yeah it could be could be no, he no. That's for real. It. He's lazy as hell. Oh my god, he's your godson. Don't talk to him. Don't just because he's him. my godson doesn't mean he's not lazy. <laughs> what the hell? Maybe he takes after his ninong. Definitely doesn't take after me. I mean, he looks like me, but then he definitely doesn't take after me. I mean, maybe he does. He's just freaking watching a uh, like Coco Melon and shit like that. Like, no, all your sister morning. doesn't let them watch Coco Melon. Anymore. Well, he watches some. He watches. He watches freaking Miss Rachel. Miss Rachel is like uh, educational for kids. I think Miss Rachel's fire. You know, there's actually a Filipino dude on Miss Rachel. Oh, really? Is there? Yeah, he's like this scrawny Filipino guy who's like singing. Of course, he's singing. That's, yeah, exactly right. They're like, oh, let's cast the Filipino <laughs> and make sure he can sing. Say. A little bit. <laughs> Hey, it's okay. I got the Jalisco joke off earlier. Technically, I said it, but I knew what you were thinking. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, wait. This is what I want to say. So at your party, at your Jalisco party, are we going to have a... Oh, no. That's Jaritos. Fuck. Jaritos is a Mexican drink, though. But, so, yeah. Okay. Is Jaritos from also, like, a city? Is, uh, Jalis- uh, I think Jaritos is from... It is from a specific city, I think. But is it from, like... Jaritos? No, it's not from Jaritos. You would think. I mean, you know, if we have like tequila, 
And then Haritos. I'm genuinely wondering. Like, I'm not trying to be an asshole. Like, I just want to know. Um, let's see. Oh, I knew it. It's based in Guadalajara. Oh, Haritos is also from Guadalajara? Yeah. Damn. Honestly, Guadalajara is like, you know what sucks? And I'm going to talk about this real quick. Guadalajara is like, I love Guadalajara. Don't get me wrong. But now, a lot of like the Mexicans in Guadalajara are light-skinned, blonde, and like colored eyes. And some of my mom's family members are like that. And then I'm just, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, what the, what the fuck? Like, why didn't I get those jeans? Like, I don't know why it is, but like from where my mom's from and from where my dad's from, it's a very drastic difference of mm -hmm. like the type of Mexican that you are. You could be either light skinned, blonde, or like have like very like dirty blondish hair and colored eyes in Guadalajara where my dad's descent is from is from Puebla which is very dark skinned Mexicans and uh like dark hair and dark eyes and so what you're saying is you're not comfortable being dark skinned I when I was younger I wasn't I remember I used to cry to my mom about being dark skinned really yeah I remember that and I would cry and be like why am I not lighter skinned uh because, and then when I met some of my mom's family members who are here, they all have, like, they all have, um, which sucks because the family that I'm thinking about, most of them have colored eyes, like green or blue eyes. And I remember seeing them and I was all like, what the hell? Like, why didn't I get that? Some of them are dirty blonde and others have like dark brown, dark uh, black hair. And I was just like, they look very pretty. Like they're all so pretty. Yeah. And then there's one family member who got dark skin, brown eyes and black hair. And, and he looks nothing like his siblings. Oh, and they all, oh, they're siblings, siblings. They're all sibling siblings. Damn. And that one, the last one, he's like, looks completely different. That's insane. It's insane how i would see work. like I, I would i would hate it in the sense of like because i don't look like my siblings mm -hmm. so you kind of just look like unfortunately you kind of just look like an adopted kid when you take like a family photo i swear to like, god it, it, like and i'm not being i'm not trying to be fucked up no. like i'm just trying to put myself in that situation and just thinking to myself like Am I really part of this family right no, now? No, and it's crazy because when I was younger, like, that side of the family, I don't normally see that often just because, like, we don't see them that often. And so I see them maybe, like, twice every, like, I don't know, six, seven years. Okay. Maybe. And so when I first met them, I thought that the last sibling was adopted. That's crazy. And so then it wasn't until, like, I was older that I was like, oh crap no it's just that's just how genes work like <laughs> you got that those genes yeah and i remember being younger that like i just would like i hated how i looked i was called morena because i was dark-skinned yeah by a crossing guard at my elementary school <laughs> morenita she would call me morenita morenita and i look at my grandma and i'm like what the hell does that mean i asked her my, my grandma one time yeah. she told me oh it's because you're dark-skinned i'm like what see i'm see i was kind of the opposite because like i'm a little bit more like on the light-skinned filipino side mm -hmm. and so when i went back to the philippines maybe like i don't know 15 it's actually inching closer to 20 years now it's kind of crazy but um i was there for like a whole summer i believe with my sister and um i got super dark mm -hmm. and i loved it <laughs> i was like i came back to the united states looking you like man tan. like i got like a 10 and everything i'm feeling good like like it's kind of like you know when you go to hawaii or something or you go to like some place where it's like I've never been okay well when you go to some place that's like super hot and then you just get like a cool like tan and you're just oh, like yeah. oh yeah like i feel like good in this like new skin like but it was there like much longer and i was much darker i will say sometimes i get very jealous of your eyes because your colored eyes, like you have colored eyes sometimes. I know. Yeah, you do. You like certain days and certain days. No, certain not, days when change. like when I can see like the light hitting you, you have colored eyes. You have these very beautiful like like brown eyes, and I'm just like, bro. Like I hope our kids get your eyes because I don't like mine. Maybe it's just the sparkle I have in my eyes for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks, babe. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. Uh, but I do want to talk about the uh, the Winnie the Pooh pot. The Cantarito. The Cantarito. Because that thing was massive. And that's what she said. But Jackie showed me a video of this Cantarito. And literally, I've never seen so much liquid going into a pot. It was a combination of like, what you say, grapefruit? It was grapefruit oranges. juice. Oranges. Grapefruit juice, orange juice, uh, a lot of squirt. Like two bottles of tequila and like all the squirt and you could think juice. of. And lime juice. Yeah. And this man was going in, like the guy who was making the drink, he was just going in. He was in. going super fast. He was going super fast. Like he I, was pouring like four bottles of like squirt at the same time. And I I'm like, dude, how much people need that squirt, bro? I really want us to go to Mexico because I want to see your reaction. Like I want, I don't want to go to like mainstream Mexico, like Cancun or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. I want to take you to like Guadalajara. And just have you experience that. Like, yeah. it's so crazy. It's like, I love it. I love it. It's like, it's better than like, you know, Cancun. I Like in, in my eyes, it's just better because, you know, you have authentic food. You're hanging out with like my family that was yeah, there that yeah, like yeah. they drink all day long and it's just a party like all the time and yeah it's well i think that's like any um any sort of like vacation that you want to do it's like yeah you know it's cool to do like the uh touristy stuff whether Mm -hmm. it be like cancun or whatever but like if you want to get down to like the real nitty gritty like we for real outside over here in mexico Mm -hmm. like that's the shit that i'm like super into because it's like um i remember even you showed me like a photo of what is supposedly the greatest taco on earth. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that shit looks amazing. Yeah, it's like, so funny story about that. So my when my parents went to Guadalajara this past time, they go to this taco man uh, that's always set up there. And he's been there for decades, so much so that, like, my grandpa went there with my uncle when he was a kid. And so, yeah. It's, he's been that man's been there forever and it's like the best tacos we've ever had and um my grandpa made a bet with the man when my uncle jonathan was younger he's like hey if my son eats like 30 tacos or 40 tacos or whatever we don't have to pay and the man's all like all right like if your son eats like 40 tacos then you guys don't have to pay my uncle ate 40 tacos and they didn't have to pay. Which, uh, wait, which uncle My was uncle it? Jonathan. Oh my God. Yeah. And they were like, he was a kid. <laughs> and it was funny is that my grandpa made the bet or like the guy made the bet with my grandpa. And my uncle Jonathan was there like, oh, I have to eat 40 tacos. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it was either that or you pay up for the 40 yeah, tacos. That's so a lot of freaking no money. Choice. But yeah, like that man has been there for, for decades. Um, my like yeah and then what's really cool is that like when my family goes to Guadalajara and we go with our like go and see our family out out there we go to El Centro which is downtown and there is one specific like there's a specific place in El Centro where there's like a post it's like literally a post a a wall and there my grandpa used to sell belts back like way back then and it's between these two stores that are still there. And hmm. we always take a picture in front of the wall. And oh, it's a random cool. wall. And people look at us like, what the, <laughs> like, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> um, but it's, uh, it's the wall where my grandpa would used to sell belts. And that's oh, what that's he would cool. try and do is make his money. That's sick. Yeah. I love seeing it. I love yeah. going like that like, and just learning more about my family. So then it, it's just an empty wall now, It's just or? It's just a... Well, it's always been an empty wall. It's like... Oh, but he would sell belts in front of the yeah, wall. Yeah, he'd okay, sell okay, belts in it, front of the it. wall. Like, it wasn't even a store. He just... It was just his way of making money. And then, like, eventually, like, when my mom and my aunt came around when they were born and, like, were younger, they would sell waters in El Centro. That's how they, that's how they try to make their money when they were growing up. Damn. That's super lit. Well, mm-hmm. shout out to your grandpa. Yeah. Shout out to the multiple belts that he sold too. That's <laughs> right. cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And then he w- when he was here, he when he would go back, he would always take a picture by the wall too. <laughs> yeah, just memories and whatnot. Yeah. 
I'm still stuck on the fact that your uncle ate 40 damn tacos. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of freaking tacos. That's like going into like any Mexican restaurant here that has like, you know, like the super fat ass burrito challenges. Oh, yeah. And I'm just looking at people like, why would you put yourself through that shit? Like, right. Like it just doesn't seem fun. Like going through challenges like that, it just yeah. doesn't seem fun at all. I just look like at I, it, I, I it, literally gag. I literally, it's just like unappetizing at that point. So unappetizing. Yeah. I mean, I think when it comes to like food and drink, like I've been good with like limiting myself mm-hmm. so often. Let me tell you guys this story about what happened this past week with my friend Charles. Oh God. So my friend Charles, right? He hits me on a Wednesday, and he's like, "Hey, bro, Wing Wednesday." And I'm caught up doing work and all that. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, when? He's like, bro, today is Wednesday. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, okay, like, fine, let's do it, whatever. So I head over to his crib. As soon as I get there, he's like, oh, like, let's drink some Bombay Sapphire. And I'm looking at him like, there's so much alcohol in here, but you're picking Bombay Sapphire, which I haven't had since I was like 21. I was like, fuck it, whatever. Drank like three shots before we left, which tasted exactly like celery, like alcoholic celery. It was yeah, you've never had Bombay. No. Disgusting. So and I don't ever want to. Oh, yeah, no, you shouldn't. I wouldn't wish like a Bombay uh, rain on anybody <laughs> on my worst enemy. So we went to this place called Dr. Teeth in the Mission District. I think it was on like 16th and Mission and it was cool. We got maybe like 20 wings in total. And then we had like what I guess he said, three pitchers of IPA. And then we went over to another bar and then ended up getting Long Islands and watching Rush Hour for a bit. Long story short, we end up calling the Uber. I get my ass back home. And then I end up calling Jackie. And then in the midst of that phone call, I said, let me call you back. And I was like, just yakking my brains out like that crazy. Conversation, that conversation was not how it went. He called me <laughs> like five times <laughs> and I was out at a trivia night with my friends and he calls me and he's all like, I'm on my way home. I was like, okay. And by the time I, I know when Nico is drunk <laughs> and I know when he's lying to me. And so I ask him, I'm like, are you okay to drive? Yeah, 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 I'm okay to drive. I'm like, he's not okay to drive, but okay. <laughs> like, he literally lives three minutes away. I'm praying to God that he makes it home. So then he he's all, and I'm just like, okay, well, I'm still here. I'll call you in a bit. He goes, okay. So then he, I hang up. He calls me again. Literally a minute later, he goes, I'm on my way home. And I was just like, okay, babe, like, I'm about to wrap up. Like, I will call you when I'm, like, in the car. And he goes, okay, 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 okay. And then I was just like, are you okay to get home? <laughs> and he's like, yes. And I was just like, okay, I know he's not okay. I was like, are you inebriated? Because if I ask him if he's drunk, he won't say yes. But if I ask him if he's inebriated, he will tell me. Because <laughs> that's the word he uses. And to I try. was inebriated. He, that's a word he tries to use when he doesn't want me to like, I don't know, get mad that he's drunk. And I wasn't drunk. I was inebriated. Slightly. Anyway. So that's the word that he uses when bit. he thinks that, like, I'm going to get mad. And so he says, I'm I'm a little bit inebriated, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'll call you, like, in a <laughs> second. I hang up the phone. He calls me again, and I'm just like, babe, let me say bye to people, and then I will call you back. <laughs> and he goes, okay, okay, okay. So then I call him when I'm in the car, and then he's, like, talking to me. He's asking me how my day went, and I'm talking to him and telling him how trivia night went. And I'm already home by this time. And, and then he goes, so how was trivia? I was like, I literally just fucking told you. Like, I, like that's <laughs> one of my biggest pet peeves with Nico <laughs> is that when he's drunk, he, like, just doesn't pay attention, and he's like, like, <laughs> it's just like, I can't talk to him. I cannot talk to this man when he's drunk. And so, like, he asked me, like, three times back to back to back, how was my day after I finished telling him how my day was? And then, so I'm driving home, and he goes, I need to throw up. And then I'm just like, okay, well, then go throw up. And he's like, okay, I will go throw up. I was like, okay, go throw up. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm going to call you back. Okay, call me when you're home. Call me when you're home. And I'm just like, hang up the fucking phone and go throw up. Like, <laughs> at this point, I'm annoyed with him. <laughs> and then and then he hangs up. He's throwing up. He calls me. He's like, I threw up. I was like, 
It's like that you're at, like he was acting like a five year old who goes to his bed, her parents' bedroom and is at the doorway. It's like, <laughs> mom, I threw up. Like, babe, what the fuck? What? I, I just want I wanted to update you on my uh on my not whereabouts <laughs> my uh what I was doing. <laughs> that's it the thing is you didn't know that you had already updated me like five times that's what i'm saying but okay so then would you rather me under communicate or over communicate <laughs> there we go that's the clip what are we doing are we under communicating or over communicating <laughs> when you're drunk <laughs> what are we whatever. doing whatever whatever see exactly why is it with that when a man over communicates don't start <laughs> Don't start. I'm gonna stop you in your tracks I'm just right kidding. there. It's a joke. <laughs> it's an ironic joke reflecting the times that we have or that we are in. Rather. That we have. <laughs> are you inebriated right now? No, but I am tired as hell because I just woke up. Yeah, he um, did. Oh, yeah. man. But that was a fun night. I ended up like yakking my brains out again, like mid, uh, like mid sleep. Yeah. It was the worst. It was the worst. And, and then to kind of follow up that, like, uh, it was my friend uh, Pano's birthday this past uh, Saturday, I believe. And so mm-hmm. what ended up happening was we got, like, bottomless mimosas. It's, like, me and a group of, like, you know, 11 people. And so naturally my friends, they just want to drink a lot. So then they're like, oh, like, j- let's just chug mm-hmm. the first one. Your friends don't want to drink a lot. Your friends want to get drunk as fast as they, <laughs> they can. They want to get drunk as fast as possible. That, so <laughs> we... Oh, oh, I, let, I, me, let, me, let me take this rain. Let me take this rain. <laughs> so then, like, we ended up chugging the first, um, the first mimosa. And then as soon as that's done, they ask for the second round. And then they want to chug that. I said, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay. And then they just keep going, keep going. I'm just like, guys, like, can we just relax, please? I just want to chill. I don't want to do, I don't want to get like drunk. And I'm glad that I went that way because like on the way walking to like another bar, like the birthday boy, he ended up yakking his brains out on the street. And I was like, yeah, not a good look. Ladies and gentlemen, not a good look. Yeah. Drunk stories as per Nico blitz. The twice past in a week. week. The past twice week. In a week. <laughs> oh, so God. to bring it back to the conversation, if and when we go to Guadalajara. Guadalajara. Why do you say Guadalajara? Babe? Because Guadalajara is the fire-ass Mexican restaurant down the street yeah, on you're mission. you're dating a Mexican. You're dating a Mexican, and you already <laughs> know how to say it. You already know how to say it. <laughs> Guadalajara. Thank you. But the restaurant, for the record, is Guadalajara. It's like me saying <laughs> Tagalog. Do you want me to say Tagalog? <laughs> Yeah, sure. That's fine. I'm not offended. But I respect your culture, so I say uh, (laughs) Tagalog. You know, someone actually came up to me this week. Random guy. This random guy. (laughs) This random guy at the club. And he's like, yo, your name's Nico, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, it's Vallejo. I'm saying, I said, no, I said no, 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 no. I said, nah, bro. It's Vallejo, bro. No, it's Vallejo. You didn't. Yeah. No, he didn't. A random you didn't guy. Tell me that. It was a random guy. And I was just like, bro, it's Vallejo. He's like, no, bro. It's Vallejo. I'm like, okay, whatever. You didn't dog. tell me that. Because I'm just remembering this combo right now. <laughs> That's hella <laughs> funny. That's hella funny. Also, shout out to the couple at Disneyland who came up to me. I think his name was Simon. I think his name was Simon. Hold on. Actually, I have it right here. But I want to give a shout out to you because uh, I don't know if you're listening to this podcast. But um, I was doing a live broadcast for uh, work at, whatchamacallit, at Disneyland. This guy comes up and he's wearing the same jacket as Cruz. And then as he's leaving... Uh, as he's leaving, he go, he looks at me and he goes, say hi to Nico. And I was just like, okay. And then I was just like, oh shit. Like maybe they're friends or like they know each other, you know? (laughs) I was just like, I don't know. And then his wife goes, we love the podcast. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. I need to find his, I need to find, I literally saw it. Are you just trying to shout him out on IG? Oh, okay. Yes. Oliver. 
Oliver. Oliver Quesada and his family. Shout out to Oliver because they were so cool. We appreciate you. I appreciate you for saying hi and listening to the podcast. Yeah. Shout out to Oliver Quesada. Quesada. Shout out to Oliver Clothes Off. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. That was a dumb joke, man. What? Oliver Clothes Off? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. God. Well, the Mexipino Food Fest is going down um, on Sunday, October 16th. Hopefully, you've listened to this podcast and you'll make your way to the Food Fest. I think we have a couple people coming from like Reno too, which is crazy. Yes. We have um, uh, two best friends that are making their way from Reno. My and we're best friends. And we're, they really like, they, they, uh, them. they emailed me. And just wanted to meet us. And they were like, "Like, are we going to get a chance to meet you guys? Like, or, like, I was just like, of course. Like, what the heck? Like, this is why we wanted to do the Food Fest is to listen, to listen, to meet all of you guys, meet our listeners. And, like, yeah. and just have, like, the whole community in one place. And, like, all of us are probably going to hella relate to, like, everything that's going on, you know. And going to be a really good time. I'm so excited for the food. I'm so excited for all of our vendors. You know, I really hope everything goes super smooth. We're going to be doing a live podcast there. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, if you guys are going and you see us, please do not hesitate to stop us to say hi because we do want to meet everyone who listens to our podcast. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we're super excited. This is our very first event. So if things go a little haywire, <laughs> um, we're going to figure it out. Um, but yes, we're also doing an LA one soon. Um, I know we had a ton of requests for a San Diego one too. So we'll try and do that as well. But um, right now, Bay's first, LA second. And we'll see about San Diego. Yeah, let's try to get it going at the top of the year. Maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. We'll see. We, we have a couple. We have a couple dates in mind. Actually, I have a couple dates in mind that I didn't even told Jackie about. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. tell me anything. <laughs> but we, uh, if if you guys also see, like, we do have these shirts. This is a black version, um, but we're actually going to be selling like the gray version um, online very soon. So yes. if you are listening to this podcast, or actually viewing this podcast, and you got all the way to the end. Um, it says Camusta, Ola Ola in the front and then Mexipino podcast in the back. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'll be selling it online. Uh, Pre-orders only for, for about a week, just about a week. Like, yeah. you know, some super light and hopefully you can get your hands on this very exclusive merch. Yes. Um, but yeah, see each and every one of y'all at the Mexipino food fest going down 1016 Sunday. My name is Nico Blitz. And I'm Jackie Ramirez. And if you guys want to purchase tickets to our food fest, the link is in our bio on all our socials. Yes. And also shout out to our Patreon subscribers. Subscribers, we appreciate you. You guys also get 15% off all the merch. Yes. Just saying. Adios, buys, buys, guys, and girls. Adios. <laughs>